this video is part of a series or playlist of videos on electromagnetic induction. As discussed in the introductory video and all subsequent videos, I've broken the topic of induction down into three different types of induction. Here I'm going to introduce type 3, which can be thought of as the overlap of types 1 and 2. To get the most out of this video, it's best to familiarize yourself with types 1 and 2 before returning to this video. Consider a uniform magnetic field with flux density B directed away from us or pointing into the screen. Imagine a fixed conductor, colored white, is placed in this field. Next, consider another conductor, colored pink, that makes contact with the white conductor, as shown. The pink conductor, however, moves to the right with speed V. In what follows, the length of the moving conductor, L, will be relevant. The length of the pink rod, its direction of motion, and the direction of the field lines are all perpendicular to each other. As you can see, the moving and fixed conductors enclose an area of rectangular shape, and as the pink conductor moves, the enclosed area will of course increase. You've probably realized that there is a magnetic flux through the enclosed area, which will increase over time. Let's figure out the consequences of this. Recall the definition of magnetic flux through an area. It's simply given by the flux density B multiplied by the area A. Our rectangular enclosed area has a height L. Let's call the base of this rectangle at this instant in time X. The flux is therefore BLX. As the pink conductor moves, X will increase so the flux through the area will increase as well. Faraday's law for flux changes in a loop thus comes into play. Here, we're only concerned with the magnitude of the induced EMF, so the minus sign is missing, and the number of turns of wire is just one. If we replace the flux phi with BLX, the induced EMF becomes the following. Note that this is because B and L are constant, the change in flux is therefore just BL times the change in X. But the change in X over the change in time is nothing other than the speed at which the pink rod moves, V. What we've ended up with here should hopefully ring a bell. It's simply Faraday's law for cutting field lines, introduced in the second video in the playlist. This is hardly surprising, since this is exactly what's happening as the pink conductor moves right. This example of induction can thus be analyzed from the point of view of either cutting field lines, type 1 induction, or flux changes in a loop, type 2 induction. Calculating the induced EMF using the corresponding formula for each type is not only possible, but entirely equivalent, as I've demonstrated. For these reasons, this scenario is situated at the overlap of types 1 and 2 and is an example of what I call type 3 induction. If you're watching this for the first time, you may want to pause the video for a few minutes and take stock of what's been discussed. Doing so is known to consolidate and accelerate learning. Now, here's a question for you, which should just be a bit of revision. Can you please try to figure out the direction of the induced EMF and the direction of the induced current that would flow in the circuit that encloses the area. Pause the video and have a think about this. Afterwards, we'll discuss the solution. If you're familiar with the videos and concepts discussed in the induction playlist, you'll hopefully have realized that we can call on our good old friend Fleming's left-hand rule to help us out here. Considering a single conduction electron in the pink rod moving right, you should find that the magnetic force on this electron is downwards. This means that the direction of the induced EMF and current in the rod will be upwards, as shown by the black arrow. Conventional current will thus flow anti-clockwise in the circuit, as you can see from the black arrows. If the explanation given was unclear, let me point you to the second video in the induction playlist on cutting field lines, where I give a more in-depth explanation of the physics at play here. If you found this video useful, please like it, share it, 
subscribe to the Forest Learn channel if you haven't already and leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you if you have any questions or suggestions. Uh, take care and I hope to speak to you soon.